Hurricane Irma is out there somewhere. It's a big blow, a big circulating, circular blow out in uh, the Atlantic. Now, um, if something happens with this, I will make a special report. I am currently uh, actually four days behind where you are right there. I'm making some shows ahead of time because of the Indianapolis conference. I'm not going to be making shows while I'm traveling and concentrating on preparing for that conference. So I'm trying to get ahead. So I'm talking to you from September the 2nd. So I don't know too much about this storm yet. You're already in September 6th right now. So you're like, oh yeah, we know where this thing's going. I don't. It looks to be a punishing storm, a severe storm. And do I see it now as a judgment of God? Yes, I, I haven't ever looked at uh, natural disasters this way, but I'm starting to. Um, because the times, they are a-changing. And so, everything's different now. Everything is different now. So, if this thing makes landfall in Florida, for instance, South Florida, could hit the Carolinas, could stay down by the Caymans or by uh, Dominican Republic. I don't know where I'm sitting right now. You may know more on the Wednesday, the 6th of September. But if it does make landfall here, I will go out with my camera and film it. Even if it's a Category 5, I will film it and I will bring the footage to you. Okay? But if it goes somewhere else, I probably won't say anything about it. Except I will tell you this. That if it's a devastating Category 5, I now see it as a different hurricane than, than Katrina. Because of the times. Because of this... Well, I'm actually dating it from the eclipse of August 21st because that was so close, 33 days from the great sign of September 23rd, which marks the beginning of God's plans, the, the, re, the beginning of God's taking back of the low Ami people and making him again his people. This is Martin Zender. Good morning to you. Concerning the... Uh, concerning Monday show about the capsule being locked, uh, strapped into a space capsule and ready to go. I hope you enjoy that fake footage. Um, you know, it is a vast conspiracy. We've never been in space. We've never even been in the air, actually. Um, as far as that footage goes, you know, the government is like 500 years ahead of us technology-wise. And so they've built a giant studio somewhere in New Mexico and it's invisible. Uh, because the government is able to make anything invisible that they want. Like, like I said, they're 500 years ahead of us in technology. So they have like this 5,000 ceiling, 5,000 foot ceiling invisible studio where they faked the space shuttle launch. And uh, it looked real. <laughs> it looked real. But folks, we've never even been off the ground. The Wright brothers, that was faked. Orville and Wilbur immediately went into a government protection program in fact we've never actually been in the air you just think you've been on airline flights but folks it's a huge conspiracy what nasa does is after they they do there is a plane it is on the runway you are at an airport but once they have you ever noticed that when you get on the plane there's this mist that comes out the sides like it looks like a venting or a condensation did you notice how funny it looks huh did you notice it really doesn't look like regular condensation yes well that is a gas that makes you unconscious and from that point you are injected with a chip that gives you the memory of being on a flight so when you get injected with this chip that's still in your head right now you you, you have this memory like you're thinking back and you're like yeah I'm pretty sure I ordered a double jack with no ice and looked at the in-flight magazine. And I'm pretty sure that the fat guy over by the window crawled over me to go to the bathroom. No, those are fake memories planted in you by a chip. In fact, you were, all of you, loaded onto a bus and driven to your destination by NASA. The secret organization. Well, you have no idea how far advanced they are. And so, obviously, it's going to take you several days longer to get to your destination by bus. So, 
they adjust the calendars. You're, they adjust your watch, they adjust your computer, they adjust the dates so you think you're arriving on the day. And everybody that you're going to see, they're in on it. They're actors. They're actors who try to convince you that only two hours has passed when in fact two days has passed because you traveled to your destination on a bus. Wake up, people. We have never been in the air. Okay, you see those planes flying around? Yeah, you see that? Ever heard of holograms? Okay, don't be stupid. Now, back to Revelation chapter 12. And when the dragon perceived it was cast into the earth, it persecutes the woman who brought forth the male. And given to the woman were two wings of a large vulture. King James says eagle, but no, it's actually a vulture if you look at all the references to this bird um all the references point to the vulture the vulture congregates uh, the vulture looks for dead meat to feast upon it doesn't sound very elegant but the truth in itself is elegant i'll take the wings of a vulture i think they're bigger i think they're bigger i think you want the wings of a vulture that she may be flying into the wilderness, into her place, there where she is nourished a season and seasons and half a season. Aren't you a little tired of the imagery of Revelation? I am. I, I want plain language. This is why it's kind of fun for me to write my newsletter. It gives me a break from all this imagery, all this visionary. And I can get to the point and say things plainly. A season, season, and half a season a season seasons and half a season is three and a half years or 1260 days depending on what aspect of things god wants to engage us with days speak of the sun uh it's also taught, called 42 months so when it's called days it means it's a happy context um when it says 42 months it means it's a evil context because it's measured by the moon months are measured by the moon and the moon comes out at night when the boogeyman hides beneath your bed and in your closet a season seasons and half a season um, being nourished this has to do with the agricultural times the crops Israel will be nourished during seasons their seasons will come forth for them and again, all the feasts of Israel, hear that word feasts, were based on the agricultural seasons. And this is important to know because people get hungry. And the serpent casts water as a river out of its mouth after the woman that she should be carried away by its current. I believe this is somehow literally going to be a flood. It's going to be literal water in the form of a tsunami, a river something's going to happen and it's probably going to come into turkey i know you think i'm talking crazy martin zender how can you possibly take these things literally and yet here i am doing it in front of everybody and the earth helps the woman and the earth opens its mouth and swallowed the river now we know that the figurative part is the earth opens its mouth the earth doesn't have a mouth so you have to if martin if you're going to take everything literally then you must say that the earth has a mouth i'm not stupid i understand figures of speech it opens its mouth it somehow drains it it's figurative language but the figurative language always points to literal things you need to remember this and the imagery of a vision are yes things john sees but they represent literal things you can't because there's a figure of speech present you can't throw everything out as figurative since the earth doesn't have a mouth therefore the earth isn't draining water no God is said to have a mouth. The word has gone forth from my lips. He's said to have lips. If he has lips, then he must have a mouth. If he has a mouth, he must have teeth. If he has teeth, he has an gums. If he has a mouth, he has an epiglottis. Or is it a figure of speech? Yes, it is. It's a figure of speech called condescension. When God speaks to us as a man so that we can understand him. Comes into our realm of understanding. The dragon is angry with the woman and came away to do battle with the rest of her seed. There we go. I think this shows us clearly, not clearly, nothing's clear here, really, that the woman is Israel and the seed are the sons and daughters, the offspring of Israel. The many sons that Christ is bringing to glory, 
Abraham's seed, the 144,000, the vast throng. And the dragon is angry, yes, came away to do battle with the rest of her seed who are keeping the precepts of God and who have the testimony of Jesus. Now, that is the last verse of chapter 12. And as far as I can tell, I'm finished talking to you about the constellation of September 23rd. No, no, I'm, I'm really not. Because I still must speak to you of the seven ecclesias in the wilderness that are named in Revelation chapter 2. These are waiting to be formed. And I believe, of course, the beginning of their formation will occur at the sign. And I have to remind you of this. This sign, the alignment of Virgo and Leo on September 23rd, is not creating some sort of magnetic force field or any kind of force field that's going to be vibrating power upon people. It is just, it's a signpost. It's like a, it's not like a sign. It is, it's a sign in heaven telling us that God is beginning something new. That's why I say that these birth pangs are creeping up because even though September 23rd is the sign of the deliverance, this is when Jupiter comes out of the womb. This is when sons are born. Uh, the process, the incubation period, the period of parturience occurred nine to 10 months ago, between nine and 10 months ago. I shared you the Inception Comet video where a comet went through the loins of Leo and into the womb of Virgo. I showed that to you from a man who showed it to us on the Constellation application. What's the name of that thing? Stellarium.com. So these things begin at a certain time and they come to fruition. And I believe the difference between them beginning and coming to, uh, coming to fruition is the frequency of pangs. Just like a woman in labor, as I told you yesterday, it goes from boom, 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 to boom, boom, boom. Boom. And then very quickly from that to boom, 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 boom. Oh, someone told me, and I totally agree with this, that the temple that is to be rebuilt does not have to be an extravagant edifice. It doesn't have to be all gilded with gold like Solomon's temple was. It just has to be that a group of people, a group of Jews, hardcore Jews, who are now being trained to minister in the temple. They have all the implements. They're training the priests. They have the red heifer. All it's needed is a building that is probably on the site of the actual ancient temple, which I told you is not the Temple Mount where the Dome of the Rock is. It's on the Ophal. That is the hill that was formerly Mount Zion, which is now a neighborhood filled with like grocery stores and stuff. That's where this ramshackle, it could be a ramshackle temple. It just has to be recognized. It just has to be an agreement. It's like art. When you look at a piece of art, it, it's some like a Picasso or a, a Pizarro or a Cezanne. Some of the people in Cezanne's time thought his paintings look like a kindergarten kid coloring with crayons. But art is what you agree art is. The value placed on any object, uh, whether it's art or not, technically, uh, is the value of it. And people decide that. If the thing is is um, esteemed and wanted, then the price goes up. So, likewise, whatever they say the temple is, that's the temple. In our mind, we think it has to be a exact replica of Solomon's temple. That's what Christianity is looking for. So anything less than that, they're going to go, eh, I don't think that's the temple. Great. Great. This will keep the thing under the radar. This will keep the majority of Christians from panning over it. But then again, maybe they're meant to pant over it. And a, a, a lot of them will. I think the ones who are pointing out this constellation will, and who made a big deal out of the August 17th, uh, eclipse which was a big deal i think these are the ones who they will say well this is the temple even though it doesn't fit our 
dream temple it's still the temple it's not on the temple mount so i think many christians will say that but they're deceived i shared a video with you earlier that the actual temple solomon's temple the temple jesus was in was not on the mount that they call today the temple mount it was not where the dome of the rock is it was a few hundred yards to the west i believe it is leave it to the jews to get everything wrong i'm not an anti-semite i'm just saying they crucified their own messiah that began a pattern of getting things wrong so likewise i'll give you i might have already told you this babylon oh before i say that this one guy said it's not going to take long we we build buildings in a short amount of time especially trump i've told you before how intriguing it is that we have that the um executive in chief is a builder in chief and we need babylon rebuilt and we need a temple in in jerusalem but it doesn't take a trump to put up a temple that people uh, the jews agree okay well then we'll have to do this will have to do it'll have to make do that's it be be besides it's a fake temple so why are you looking for you're not shouldn't be looking for ezekiel's temple that he describes in i think chapter 44 don't look for that this is a fake temple this is a temple that the obvious jews are going to be satisfied with they're just going to agree that okay we'll take it at least it's in jerusalem sort of it's not on the temple mount but maybe some israelites some jews in the know will say this is ancient mount zion so we're good to go here so they build it and that's it there's the temple there's the end time temple as for babylon babylon could possibly this is just me talking now uh but this is what you come to expect I, i'm probably right babylon does not have to be the new york style metrop metropolis that we think it will be it doesn't have to have giant buildings in order to fall does it a nation can fall but does a nation technically have buildings no a city has buildings babylon will fall its power will fall its influence will fall its pride will fall just like nebuchadnezzar nebuchadnezzar fell his city wasn't touched i believe that babylon again could be a ramshackle place that is yet the center of financial commerce how can that be it could be an underground city it could be a bunker babylon could be a bunker but i'm telling you it will be on the location at the location of ancient babylon it will be called babylon it will be known as babylon well will it be called babylon babylon the great babylon i don't know that's a good one uh, because uh, i'm not sure that the seven ecclesias in ancient asia minor that were might not even have been in ancient asia minor but that will be in modern day turkey at the site of the cities mentioned in revelation 2 that were in asia minor i don't think those necessarily have to be called by their ancient names because i'm going to give you the present names of those ecclesias the cities named thyatira philadelphia ephesus ephesus is still ephesus i think but other of those are renamed they have modern names and it's exciting to think this is the site uh you ever heard of basra i think basra is the site of ancient nineveh is it basra or is it oh one of those towns you hear frequently in iran or in iran or afghanistan iraq one of those freaky countries is the ancient city of nineveh they don't call it nineveh anymore damascus is one of those rare cities where it has the same name today that it had back in the day so don't be tricked by this um, there was a city on the banks of the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers named, Bab uh, named Babylon. And that city is still known by people. And it is still known as the only place where there's ever been a world capital. There's never been any world capital except at Babylon. The Babylonian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, and the Grecian Empire, headed by Alexander the Great, was headquartered in Babylon. Therefore, this fourth world government, the one world government, and folks i reiterate to you again to have a world government you only need a world one world currency a one world currency equals a one world government a one world government doesn't have to be ugly today it can be very neat you don't need tanks you don't need armies you don't need large elephants all you need is a one world coin a one world currency 
and a few people manipulating it, owning it, and you have a one world government. And people don't even have to really need to know they're in a one world government, but that's what it'll be. They don't even need to know that this is Babylon. And yet, for some reason, this damn thing is going to be headquartered in Babylon. And it might not be a Dubai like monstrosity. It may be a series of underground bunkers, but by God, it will be Babylon. Babylon means confusion. This is where God confused the languages, scattered humanity, because he did not want them to become one at that time. Now, he wants them to become one, because they, humanity, are going to reach the pinnacle of human achievement, 666. Six, six. six is the day that man was created on the sixth day. Six speaks of the works of humanity. 666 six, six is everything humanity can do apart from God. It's going to look really good to the spiritually undiscerning, to us who are even now watching it being built in the shadows we are going to we are going to know by the grace of god and by the spirit of him who makes its home his home in us that it is the pinnacle of deception deception many will believe the false signs the false miracles but we again are so blessed to be given the spirit of god we don't look at the earth at these developments we notice them but our affection is not set here our affection is set above to the heavens from which we expect to receive and to meet our Savior.